Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to share some things about timers in Spark AR. Um, from the simple to the simple. Uh, I created a patch called the Simple Timer um, that has some simple things going on, some inputs and some outputs and some flexibility. But I'm going to talk about some other ways to do timing and timing events. Um, the most obvious, I guess, is a patch called Runtime. And this little guy keeps track of time since the effect was opened. Right now it's at eight seconds. If we press restart, it starts over. If we want to restart the time ourselves, we can use something called offset. Um, so if we drag out of that and type in offset, and get our value and reset the value on screen tab. Um, and let's plug this into the number that's displayed there. Whoa. Okay, so it's a very specific number um, with a lot of numbers after the decimal point, um, which is cool. Um, it's hard to read in this situation, but um, could be useful uh, for certain applications. We could also do round, and this will round to the nearest whole number. Now we see it's counting up. We click to restart at zero. Cool. Um, so if we wanted to stop the timer at say 10 seconds, we could use a patch called minimum. It returns the lesser of two values. So 10 is less than 22. So let's plug that in and see what happens. 10, okay, restart. And it will stop at 10. Um, so that's one way to count up to a number. Um, I don't know how you'd manage counting down. Um, I haven't really looked at that, I guess. Another thing that's useful, if you want to measure time to show instructions, you can pull out of that little node and type less than. So if the time is less than three, you can show an instruction, which I think instruction, no, okay. Um, click device and then in create instructions. Where are the instructions? Oh, instructions, they're way over here. Sorry, whoop. Okay. Do, 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 do. If they're less than three, enable. So there we go. One, two, three seconds that will show instructions. So there's some basic timing. Um, the objects that I used in Simple Timer are counters. So if we look at counter, um, we have increase and decrease, which is useful. Uh, a jump number, which can um, jump to this number, zero in this case, and a maximum count. Um, now the maximum count, it will never reach the maximum count. Um, so if you set it at five, it'll count up to four. Let's look at that. One, two, three, four, zero. So the maximum count is not five. If you wanted to count to five, you type in five, counter one, two, three, four, five, zero. And if you wanted to jump to one, I think that would five, one, oh, no, zero, okay. So it just rounds back down to zero. But if you wanted to jump to that one, it would, it would start at one. So that's what I dug into um, with the simple timer. Now the simple timer has a start, except a start pulse, um, which in this case is a uh, screen tap. So on tap, it starts the timer. You can also pause the timer with a stop pulse, uh, which is another screen tap in this situation. It could be any pulse. 
and then a screen pan I used to reset the timer. Um, and then on load as well, it shows the start time. Um, so another thing is the count up and count down booleans. So if you want to count down, you check that one. Uh, if you want to count up, you check that one. Just have to switch the values around. So our start time, since we're counting up, we'll keep it at 55. We'll count up to 555. And the speed is something that I played with in loop animation. So if you go to loop animation, which I'm using to cycle the counter, to pulse the counter, to increase or decrease, uh, duration, one second is still one second in the simple timer. But since it's loop animation here, um, if you wanted to go faster, you'd want the duration to be less. So 0.5 would be about twice as fast. Um, I wanted to make it a little more intuitive um, in speed if, as you go up it increases in rate so um, you can make it go really fast like 100 so you could count up really fast or count down really fast um, just want to make sure that your numbers correspond that one's not higher than the other in the situation so 555 to negative uh, yeah so this is what this does and then you get um, a done boolean output uh, when it's done counting which might be useful um, to show some results like in this case I'm using it to show confetti um, and then also it has a boolean which lets you know that the timers on so the timers running um, which I'm using to sort of pulse animate that um, number value there so I will open up the simple timer. It's a big mess, um, but it works. And if you want to spend the time to try to uh, recreate it, uh, go right ahead. I encourage that. Um, but it is not pretty inside here, but it does work and it's, I'm excited about it. I, I was updating a blink counting game and trying to create more blink counting games and I wanted to make a reusable timer and I think this will make my game creation process a little more smooth. Um, 